first and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. The name of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh, Bahasham, in the name. All right, of Yahweh Shah, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, our mediator and high priest, our way back to the Most High. All right, Bahashem in the name of Rahakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit, sent from on high in these latter days. All right, all right, from the right hand of the Most High, Yahweh, all right, which is through Yahweh Shai, all right, to give us comfort and understanding, all right, and a mind to call on those names and repent, all right, which is all fulfilled in us receiving the word, all right, which is likened unto Yahweh Shai himself walking with us, all right, as he walked directly with his disciples and his followers at the time where he came in the flesh, all right, and what I wanted to speak on today briefly was how that the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai are literally a two-edged sword. And one of the things that I always tell brothers is that I've never seen anything, all right, anything in this world affect people the way that this word affects them, all right, even those who believe, all right, if you look at our behavior, us constantly doing videos, us going out to the highways and the byways, making a fool of ourselves, okay, ultimately it was because we were cut, all right, but some men are cut unto healing, all right, and others are cut to their destruction to ultimately bleed out, all right, and we've seen several men come into the understanding of the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, and pretty much, as we'll get in the book of Matthew, you know, once persecution arises for the word, whether the persecution be that they have to uh, give up something in this world, all right, or they have to be, uh, uh, you know, cut. All right, in order for healing, all right, they have to be told about themselves, all right, and that comes through rebuke, you see, that comes through correction, all right, and as the scriptures say, the righteous ultimately smite you, all right, now, the righteous smite you, according to the book of Psalms, it's medicine, you see what I'm saying, it's medicine, which is healing, because you get cut, all right, but ultimately, you getting cut is the Heavenly Father showing you that he's dealing with you. And giving you a uh, chance to pretty much uh, uh, work on the particular thing or said, you know, uh, uh, area that he wants you to work on for your betterment. All right. But a lot of men, when they get cut, OK, they, they a lot of them bleed out and tap out and tell the most high pretty much. I didn't sign up for this, even after knowing what the, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach went through. All right, you even have those who are opposed to this word, but they dedicate their lives to it. Okay, meaning they were cut and captivated by the word, and like Vocab Malone is, 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 is an example. Sonetter is an example. All right, you've had various men come into this truth and get cut, and either they dedicate their lives into being scoffers, all right, or they dedicate their lives to trying to get their lick back, even creating a whole doctrine contrary to what they've been taught, all right, and they'll do it for years, man, all right, meaning they were cut, they, they, this word really affects people, man, all right, so that's what I wanted to tap into, we're going to start here in the book of uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, in the 11th verse, it says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, and that's what we're laboring for, all right, lest any man shall fall after the same example of unbelief, you know, of our forefathers at the time in Egypt, they were being cut, they were being proven, okay, after various miracles, all right, but, you know, a lot of them didn't stand the test, all right, you can, you know, read up, you know, pretty much, and um, go into that, but the believers, ultimately, the ones who labor, all right, and toil for the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, there's a rest, all right, if you strive lawfully. All right, if you're able to be cut, okay, and at the same time keep going and build, all right, and that's where you receive healing from, all right, because we all have to go through a point of humbling, 
All right, and when you go into the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, both men, women, and children are corrected. There's correction and instruction for everyone. All right, and when and as the scriptures say, all scripture is profitable. As a matter of fact, let's get that. It's that Second Timothy three and sixteen. Second Timothy three and sixteen. Okay. It says, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. All right, you have reproof and correction. Let's look at those words. Okay? Reproof, for correction, for instruction, for in righteousness. All right? So we're first going to look up the word reproof. Then we're going to look up correction. Then we're going to look up instruction. All right, so the first word reproof in the Greek is in elenkos, elenkos, all right? A proof, all right, that by which a thing is proved or tested, all right? And there's many tests that come through hearing the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? You can be listening to men you hold in high regard and you hear something that, that tests you. All right, that tests your, uh, your your patience, that cuts you, that challenges you. All right, and right there in your mind, that's where the battle is. And if if you uh, uh, choose to be evil and choose to scoff or mock, there there's angels there watching and listening to what you say. Conviction, you see. So reproof is for you to feel convicted, for you to be proved or tested. All right, the the root word. All right. To convict, to refute, to confute generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. Okay, and that happens all the time. There'll be times when you'll be listening to the apostles and elders or brothers, and they'll all right get on a particular behavior or a pattern or a mindset, and you you feel offended. You because you're getting cut by the word of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Women when they listen. Okay, I know there's many uh, uh, points where they're cut. You see, but that's ultimately what the word is for, man, because we have to acknowledge our offenses, man, and the deep, dark secrets and the things we think men don't know. The Heavenly Father, through his word, is going to search you out. You see, and that happens on a daily basis, man, to many men's destruction. All right. Uh, you know, admonish, reprove. All right. Demand an explanation. To call to account because there's particular things you may have think and thought well you know I'm, I'm good no 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 one knows but the word will come out and that right there is 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 is, is re reproof all right so that's when when you're challenged that's when you repent to Yahweh Bashim Shah but you're gonna feel that offense in the flesh first all right so you just have to do better all right uh, so let's see what the scripture said again go right back this word cut man this word really really cuts man all right um hold on second timothy okay i got it right here second timothy 3 and 16 all script scripture is given by inspiration of god and it's profitable for for doctrine all right for reproof all right, so we can go to the Old Testament to prove the doctrine to be right. All right, you Christians. For reproof, for correction. The word for correction. All right. Strong's G. Epinarthesis. Epinarthesis. All right, restoration to an upright or right state. Correction, improvement of life or character. That's what this word is for. Okay. And then the final one was for instruction, I believe, okay, or correction, all right, it says, Strong's G, 3809, Idaiah, Idaiah, all right, uh, the whole training and education of children, which relates to cultivation, and this is our culture, of mind and morals and employs for this purpose now commands and at, at, admonish all right at at me 
admonitions, all right, now reproof and punishments, all right? It also includes the training and care of the body. Wow. So this, this truth, it tells you how to take care of yourself. And when Jake, who, you know, the non-believers or, or, or Christians hear us speak about, you know, the things you can and can't eat, you know, a particular mindset, a particular thing that this world bigs up, they get cut, they get mad. Therefore, they reject the word, all right, because they want to do what the hell they want to do, okay? And this is the condemnation. Light has come into the world, but men love, all right, darkness rather than light, all right? And we have to uh, look at ourselves as children, all right, because we were what? Born again. And Yahweh Shai himself said, whosoever shall humble it himself, in the, I believe in the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter, that's this little child, all right, that's how you're going to be fit for the kingdom of heaven, because a lot of us... We get high-minded on the things that we learned in this world and, you know, particular status we may have had in this world or pride or whatever. And we come into this truth, we try to bring that same mindset and it doesn't work. Okay, we have to uh, repent and see ourselves as little children. All right? You know, some of us have been in the, 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 this truth, you know, 10 years, 13 years, 14, 15. You know, our apostles and elders, of course, you know, 30, you know, plus, you know, and that's really when you were born, all right, when you received the Holy Spirit, when you got understanding of what was right and wrong, when you started to understand what the Heavenly Father uh, required, what was clean, what was unclean, what was cool and what was uncool, okay? As a child, you took in that information and you grew. You see, there are things that, you know, us in our 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s <laughs> are, are, are just now learning that we should have understood all right, from the time we were four year old going going forward, but we're just now learning and why? Because we've been born again in a spiritual sense, man. And now we're being cultivated in the way of righteousness. Now we have a culture which leads to what? All right, uh cultivation of mind and morals, man. Through what? All right, through what? Through through the doctrine, through reproof, correction. For instruction in righteousness, man. And we've been instructed. And this is why we've been called the sons of God. All right? It's it's ultimately obedience. Okay? So this is Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay? This is the sharpest, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, sword ever. And it's in spirit. See, Esau has the sword. He's blessed with the sword in, 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 in a carnal sense. But see, we're blessed with the sword in a spiritual sense. Okay? It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of, of soul and spirit. See? It cuts you in the spirit in, internally. You see? And of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intent 